What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. I got a quick and fun one for you this week, we're gonna be making a binary typewriter. This really awesome concept was actually created by a Japanese company called Pantogram. They made a whole list of different objects that you would think exist in this world but don't and they're pretty hilarious and I came across this binary typewriter, I thought it was really funny and I really wanted to recreate it for this week's model. So let's just dive into it. So to start this thing off we're going to select a cube and we can start blocking out all the main shapes. Now we're going to start off with just the shell, the main little body of this typewriter and then we can move on to all the little tiny objects afterwards. Now to be honest, I don't really know exactly how these typewriters work, like all the little mechanical pieces and how everything is connected. So we're just going to kind of create our own little typewriter along the way. It doesn't have to actually be functional or anything like that. This whole art piece is a little comical and fictional anyways, so we don't really have to worry about making it exactly perfect. So let's just have a little bit of fun with all these shapes and we can start blocking everything out. Now most of this video is going to be a time lapse and I will jump in here and there to explain a few of the small things I'm doing. But if you're interested in a real-time, slow-paced video, I will upload that to my Patreon account and it will also include the UV mapping process. Alright, so let's just continue blocking things out and we can put this typewriter slowly together.
So next up was just creating all of those little arms that actually punch those little numbers on the page. And like I said, I don't really know exactly how these typewriters work. I did a quick Google search and it almost made it even more confusing looking at these tiny little pieces. So to keep things really easy and simple, because this model is a little fictional looking, we're just going to kind of block something out that I think looks similar to what they are on the typewriter. Now, like I said, we're not going to be too technical here, so we're not going to actually make it functional. So this piece isn't going to work properly. It's just going to look good for the render and it's going to kind of hide behind all these other objects so we don't really have to spend too much time on it. However, I did end up messing around with the shape for quite some time because I didn't really know exactly how it works, so it just made the process a little bit longer than I wanted. Anyways, let's just continue blocking things out and we can wrap up this typewriter.
So that's basically everything for the 3D modeling. Now really quickly, I'm gonna go over exactly how I did those UVs, and then we can move on to the texturing process. All right, so here's a model in its finished form. It's pretty funny looking, and I'm actually surprised it doesn't exist in real life. I feel like it could. I love these two large keys for zero and one. Anyways, I went ahead and did the whole UVs, and if you're interested in seeing that whole process, it will be included in the video that's going to be uploaded to my Patreon page, which I will link in the description below. Anyways, what I decided to do was just break this thing up into two different groups for two different textures. So on the very first texture and group is the main body and those keys. The second group and texture is everything else in the scene, so this top component as well as the piece of paper. Now I just made sure to straighten this UV shell, that's my piece of paper, that way in Substance Painter I can easily apply those zero and ones and everything will line up correctly. Anyways, that's basically the whole 3D modeling process. Now let's just jump over to Substance Painter and we can start texturing. Alright, so now in Substance Painter we can go ahead and load in our FBX file from Maya. And if everything's looking good, we can go over to our texture set settings, scroll down to bake mesh maps, and we can go ahead and pick out some textures. Now I set mine to 4K, and I also made sure to check on that use low poly mesh as high poly mesh, since I only have one mesh to work with. And then I went ahead and just baked out my textures. Now when it came to texturing this object, it was very straightforward. I actually did this one fairly quickly. I just used the smart materials that come with Substance Painter. So for that light blue metal material, I just used that steel bright layered material that comes with Substance Painter. It's a smart material and I went in and just tweaked some of those settings and applied some more dirt and grunge on top of that. Now for the keys, I just decided to use a bronze armor smart material and then for all the other little components and metal pieces, I just used different metals like the silver armor and the steel stained, as well as a few others like the steel scratched. Now I didn't want this typewriter to look too beaten up and old, but I also didn't want it to look too plain, so I just added a few different grunge effects on top of that to give it a little bit of roughness values on some of that metal. That way when that light hits that metal, you can see a little bit of grunge and a little bit of dirt on top of it. And then for those zero and ones, I just made sure to go over some of them a few times by just double clicking them. I have used a typewriter a few times in my life, like very, very briefly, but I remember the keys were annoying to press and you would just hit them a bunch of times. I've seen it in movies as well, so I thought it would add a little fun, realistic effect just by layering on some of those zero and ones. So let's just go ahead and start layering on some of these materials, and then we can fill in all these empty meshes with textures.
All right, and that's everything. That is the whole 3D modeling, UVing, and texturing process that I did to create this little binary typewriter. And once again, a really big shout out to Pantogram for this really awesome concept. And if you feel like supporting this channel even further, as well as get access to additional content like a real-time, slow-paced version of this video, including the whole UV mapping process, you can check out my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. Anyways, thanks so much for tuning into this week's video. If you liked it, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more weekly 3D content. Alright, I'll catch you guys in the next one.